Hello everyone and welcome back to the Shantae something playthrough. So in this part we're starting off yes with more backtracking. You could probably do this more efficiently if you just waited to go back to the whatever area after you had already gone through. You know. No, I gotta get it done as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely how it works. Also, the more upgrades you get, the more fun I think the game is. Because when you start off, I think I mentioned this in an earlier part, but... Risky is really weak when you start off. You have barely any health, your attacks don't do much damage, your projectiles are really slow. But you have to, once you upgrade something, like, even just one or two times, it becomes way faster and thus way more fun. And since you're not really, you don't really naturally get enough dark magic to get, to upgrade anything more than, like, the necessary mobility stuff early on, backtracking makes going through the later levels more fun for me, personally. You're starting to make this sound like Sonic and the Secret Rings, though. <laughs> uh, well, no, Sonic and the Secret Rings. Yeah, that is, game's never fun. I was gonna say Sonic and the Secret Rings is never good, regardless. Well, I mean, going through what's the first level called? I don't even remember. Uh, Sand Oasis. Sand Oasis. Zone. Going through yeah. that when maxed out is okay. It's not the the worst thing uh, I've ever. Generally played. speaking, the first mission in every level, the one where you just run to the end, is kind of fun. It, Most of the time, if you can get used to the controls, yeah. Yeah, if you can get used to the controls, that's that's the there, best it's a... thing I'll say for it, though. But I was more, <laughs> I was more taking a crack at how you describe the upgrade system, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but I mean, you're kind of right in that. In Secret Rings, the first mission's all right, but I mean, even still, the best Secret Rings levels are still about as good as a subpar Black Knight level. So you know. Now I'll, I'll I'll fight anyone on that one. The the level design in Black Knight was bland, bland, bland. Well, Black well Black Knight isn't a very good Sonic game, but it's a pretty okay beat 'em up. So you know, <laughs> I wouldn't describe it that way. But you know, uh, just well, we'll, a, we'll get a to flail that flail 'em up, I suppose. <laughs> a flail 'em up if you just like flailing at enemies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I kind of. I kind of didn't use anything except for the the jumping spin slash, though. <laughs> oh, but yeah, but it's so much fun to slash through things with that. Okay, we'll have to do that game eventually. And Gareth, Someday. we'll have to bring Gareth on that because me and Gar him both liking Black Knight are like, I think we agree on only two things, and that's Shadows better than Heroes and Black Knight's actually pretty good. I think are literally the only two things we'll ever agree on in our entire lives. Well, it's it's not like I hate Black Knight. I was just saying that the level design is not one of its strong points. <laughs> oh, well, no, not not really. It's a lot of you're running for a bit, then you stop, then you fight enemies. It's just a matter of, yeah. You know. This is like one of the things I don't really like about it is, you know, Secret Rings was awkward, but at least it had level design. <laughs> you know, it, it had things going on in the platforming challenges within the level that made it feel like it was at least trying to be. Uh, something resembling, uh, you know, maybe a Sonic game. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, it just asks you to do stuff you could do in Adventure with controls that are nowhere near as good. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's just Black Knight, when you get down to it, is a slightly less awkward version of that, but they also didn't try to have good level design either. And, you know, if, if, if you had the slightly less awkward version of Secret Rings controls plus good level design, it might have been an, a winning combination, you know? <laughs> but they kind of played it too safe and backpedaled in two directions. It's okay, we'll get the third storybook game sometime. And you know, when you backpedal in two directions, you ultimately wind up in the same place. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh yeah, uh, that is a question. Does the storybook series yeah, ever I think, come I back? think Lewis just described Sonic Team there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, will the storybook series ever come back, Ted? Most likely not. Uh, if it hasn't had another game at this point. Well, I, I just... You see, I just find it funny that they give this series a name and then drop it the next, after that game. You know, it's, it's like, okay, Iron Man comes out. The Incredible Hulk comes out after. It's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then they never make another one ever again. <laughs> oh wait, actually no, there's a better there's a better comparison for that because that actually happened in real life. The mummy reboot was the dark universe and then they never made any more dark universe Cause, movies. Cause, well, because the mummy bad. sucked. Yeah. Well I mean granted I don't think anybody who was making that movie cared I about think it. Labeling 
Sonic and the Black Knight and Secret Rings as the storybook series was very last minute. It was kind of just, you know, they wanted to have the spin-off series for their Wii exclusives, and, and well, they thought they were going to do more with it, but they didn't. <laughs> Because the Wii sort of fell off. I think uh, that they probably would have made another one if Sonic Colors didn't move to the Wii as the main game. I don't know why they moved Sonic... Oh, wait, hold on. I need to actually talk about Shantae for a moment. I was dumb in breaking those blocks because you can get that there without the cannon jump if you only break, like, the very top ones. But, yeah, so now I can't, now I can't get that, and it's going to take me a moment to realize that. So anyway, yeah, but anyway, back to the, the topic that people are actually here for us to I talk about. Think, I think comparing the two, Black Knight didn't sell as well as Secret Rings. Because Secret Rings for its polarizing, or, like, I guess that's one way I would describe it. I don't it. want to say polarizing. I think everyone admits it kind of sucks. Well, I mean, uh, Secret Rings had the... Secret Rings had the awkward benefit of coming out alongside Sonic 06, so for a short space of time, it was known as the good one of the two Sonic games that came out this year. Uh, <laughs> the, but well, you know, no, it, it was came only out the year out. It came out. Well, it came you, out the you, year out. You know, it, 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 I remember when it came out, people were comparing it to 06 and talking about how it was, it was, it was, it was good. This one is the good one. This is the one that you want to play. 06 is terrible. It, you know, it was kind of that. Yeah, I remember. I remember that too. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like you know, it was a skewed perspective because it wasn't really good. It, it was kind of bad in its own ways, and you know, a lot of people recognize that. But that and was don't the pretend like you're not immune time. to that. John, Mr. Sonic Chronicles what? is a good game. No, we talk. Wait, wait, wait. What do you what, wait? What are you bringing that reference to? To the what to the oh nobody ever like to the oh I'm not gonna pretend that like people didn't think that this was good for the whole. I don't know. I'm not making sense with my words. The people thinking that it was good just because was, it wasn't uh... as bad as 06 in comparison. There, there, there was a, there was an awkward point in time when people also gave us a Secret Rings credit for being the game where you only played a Sonic too. You, you remember yeah. that whole fad? Oh uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's still, that's still one of viewers like to bring up. You only had to play a Sonic. Yeah, we've been only playing a Sonic for like almost ten years over now, nearly a decade. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this no, was over back. over this, a decade, really. This was back yeah. when Secret Rings was new, and the la the, the, yeah, the yeah. latest main Sonic game we had was Sonic 06. So, uh, the over a decade thing didn't apply at the time. But that was that that, that was the start of this, and I think uh, Secret Rings was was the first game where um, Sega realized that they could somewhat market the games on that point. I'm sorry, I'm distracted by Somewhat. the eyeball, which just <laughs> cries whenever you hit it. <laughs> it's also bouncing like one of those old DVD screensavers. Where, does, where did the tears come from, though? There's no tear glands. The tear glands are not in the eyeball. They're in the they're below the eyeball, in the face that is, that's attached to it. But if there's no face, there's no tear... If there's yeah, no, maybe its face is invisible. If there's no face, there's no tear glands. The face is probably invisible. You can't prove. Well, it. it might be on the back of the eyeball because you know we don't ever see its its back. It might not be an eyeball. But the, the but the tear around. is coming out of the front. It assuming it's a human eye. Yeah, why are you trying to bring logic into floating eyes? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> ah, good save. When, when your scary things are logical, that makes them scarier as a result. Wait, no, isn't that? Wait, hold the phone. Isn't the fact that you don't understand it part of what's supposed to be scary about it, though? Uh, yes and no, depending on what... It depends on what kind of horror you're going for. I didn't say completely logical, just more logical. You have to understand enough to be afraid, but not understand enough that it makes it scarier. It, it's a weird balance. I mean, I don't know. I don't understand anime at all, and that scares me plenty. <laughs> you like Little Witch Academia. Hey, does that count? Yeah. I, mean, I don't think yeah. any of us are scared by anime so much as the really, really weird fan base some of the, some, uh, that accumulates around some of them. Would Risky uh. watch anime? Risky is anime. Yeah, but yeah. that doesn't mean you watch anime, you know? Because it's well, like... Well for, her, well, for her, it'd be live action. To be... Because, like, think about it... Th Damn well, to think about it this way. Like, not all cartoon characters would watch cartoons, you know? Like, Mr. Krabs wouldn't watch cartoons, even though he is, in fact, a cartoon character. You know? So, yeah. So, basically, 
What you're saying is that if if Risky would have watched Dragon Ball Z, it would be Dragon Ball Evolution. I mean, mm. uh, or I'd settle for Matrix Revolutions. What? Matrix what, John? You're right. I thought we agreed <laughs> that there were no sequels. <laughs> All right, I didn't say I didn't say shit. <laughs> you guys are living in your fantasy land. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, uh, I don't know where we were, what we were getting at. Did you see my sick sequence break? Back Not there? really a sequence break, because that's what I did. Oh. Um, yeah. So the moral of the story is, uh, Black Knight did poorly, <laughs> Metacritic-wise, and the storybook series is gone. Uh, sure. Although, I, I, I think I was going to try to say this earlier. I think that they probably would have made another one if Sonic Colors wasn't a Wii game. I don't know what the logic behind making it a Wii game at that time was necessarily because 2010 the wii wasn't really doing super hot at that point i think they had some sort of exclusivity no, but all the, all the uh, well that and uh, all the uh, all sonic fans had a wii and i think colors i think is financially did really good yeah it that did. And for because it was the ball. only sonic game in like five years to be universally like the whole thing to be considered good like not uh, just the daytime uh, or whatever you know for some oddball skewed as hell reason the, the Wii version of Unleashed did better than the it did better critically than the uh, HD version which still uh, dazzles me I, I, I think I know the reason why but, well I mean it didn't yeah. it didn't have the sun metal problem but it also didn't have uh, as good a game gameplay system so well, well, here's the thing though, because I understand why the Wii version would be considered better. Because I mean, when, and when at the end of the day, the level design is more barren, but it also makes the barren. boost formula <laughs> easier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that, that's coincidence. Coincidence. Uh, so, the so, so is, the uh, next boss for Shantae Five will be the level design barren. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, really, I think it, it might even just be as simple as the team that does, that reviews Xbox or 360 is probably not as keen to like 3D platformers as the team to do Nintendo, you know? Well, uh, what, what I'm getting at is that comparing the two, the Wii version and the 360 version, which is easier to jump into? And that's the Wii version, no doubt. I think the HD version is more fulfilling... But it also asks for more from the start because of the different level design and how the boost mechanics are implemented compared to the Wii version, which has broader level design so it's not as punishing if you fuck up. But it also, in comparison to the HD version, looks boring. It also doesn't ask you to do a half an hour of Werehog all at once. It just it, it lets you turn the game yeah. off after 10 minutes. So critically, I can understand why the Wii version was better received, even though I think the HD version is the better game. Hmm. It's just, you know, I remember what the reviews and stuff said at the time, and none of it has any, th has any resemblance to what you just described. <laughs> well, that's, what the, what, that's why it's my interpretation. Yeah, it's also, yeah. we also have the benefit yeah. of hindsight as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, we do. It's just like, you know, that people said that, like, there was less werehog. <laughs> that's what they actually described it as. Well, no, it's, it's, it's... It's it's a that's a psychological thing because I was just bringing yeah. it up. There's about the same amount of werehog. You're just allowed to take breaks, so it doesn't feel like as much werehog at, at once, you know. Yeah, but it is in fact as much werehog. Arguably <laughs> like, more, I think, in some sense, instances, because you have to do like six werehog stages in Eglinton Land. It's ridiculous. Yeah, instead of and instead of going back and forth between uh, day stage Sonic and Werehog in Eggman Land, you do Werehog, 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 <laughs> like that. If but I but it's also not an hour long level is also the thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, Eggman Land is still a goddamn marathon. I remember I like just die, Squid Baron. The time trial sort of hot dog mission thing for Eggman Land was. Like, because of the requirement for the hot dog mission, as always, you have to do it within this time without dying, you wound up basically just doing the same thing three times with no change in challenge, because the time time limits were so long anyway, that you never had to worry about them, no matter what the difficulty level of the uh, hot dog mission was. And that made me laugh. <laughs> you see, actually, that kind of reminds me of uh, some Sonic Adventure 2 missions where it's like okay beat the level and now collect 100 rings that, in the level that right or, there is or beat squid the level baron's, in less than three minutes you know that right there was squid baron's 
I just spent this whole time being a boss fight and you didn't talk about me, face. <laughs> Welcome to Brain Scratch Comms. I don't know, guys, it's genius. I was like, why didn't they talk about the boss fight? We can then <laughs> plug I... our half genie hero playlist and get more views. I'm hiding off stage. <laughs> Squid Baron's the best character, and the fact that there isn't... They make a joke about Squid Baron merch at some point. I don't know if WayForward has actually made any Squid Baron merch, but if you made a Squid Baron plushie, I would spend the obnoxious amount of money that it probably would cost to get it. So, yeah, get on that, WayForward, all right? Uh, Risky, you take way too many baths. I mean... Baths aren't actually very good for cleaning yourself, because you're just sitting in your own filth for the majority of it. So, I guess she just likes being in soap, and having all of her men right next to her as she's naked. Like, that's not my thing, but whatever. You do you, I suppose. We don't have a good titty. Well, like, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the thing. I don't have... Okay, I'm not having this discussion, all right? 